He said, see what happened in the case of Nikita. You're saying, why was Disha Ravi arrested? See what happened in the case of Nikita. The police went, questioned her. It got late. Therefore, the police said, we'll come back the next day. And in the middle of all of this, Nikita absconded. She's, she's missing. If she'd done nothing wrong, then what are these people scared of? Point number two. In the WhatsApp conversations put out with the Delhi police in the press conference, there's a re reference to a conversation between Disha and Greta Thunberg where Disha is telling her that what, you know, the toolkit that you put out could attract provisions of the UAPA, uh, which is an Indian act which she was informing uh, Greta about, saying, therefore, delete the toolkit. Now, if this is true, then clearly she at some level knew that some of what she was doing may later run afoul of the law. It's not as if she didn't know that. Rahul, I want to begin where, uh, you know, Mr. Sundram, with all respect, uh, you know, uh, stopped. And uh, he makes a very important point, which is that, you know, freedom of speech and expression in this country has reasonable restrictions. And I don't think anybody in their right mind denies that. The question is, and Mr. Sundaram, you know, kind of, uh, in a way, made a reference to it, that today, the way social media is operating, two of the grounds, right, sovereignty and integrity of India, and one may add to it public order, which is also a reasonable restriction under Article 19.2, uh, could seem to, that there's an argument that that, that could be threatened simply because of the power of social media. Now, my first question, and a legal question, is that if we think social media has the capacity to threaten the sovereignty of India, thanks to a few tweets, why are we applying this so discriminately, right? So for example, uh, Rohan referred to you know, Kapil Mishra. That was not even on social media. That was a physical speech made. And yet, we don't think that the sovereignty and integrity of India is you know, uh, threatened there. Second, and to your question about the UAPA and sedition laws being involved in the manner they are, it's very important to draw attention to a statistics that while UAPA has always been there, while the law on sedition is as old you know, in India as very many laws, IPC itself, the question is why is it that it is only in the current government dispensation that there has been such a tremendous rise that we seem to be invoking UAPA and sedition as if it was just another law. And I have another very important question to raise. You see, for people who don't understand the legal technicalities, the incident happened on 26th of January, the apparent you know, uh, public disorder situation that happened. The question is, the tweet by Greta Thunberg was made on 4th of February. Nobody in the FIR that was filed was named. Now you're picking up people randomly who you think may have some connection because they're speaking to Greta Thunberg. Legally speaking, is that a threat enough for you to pick up anybody you like and slap them with whatever charges you like. And Rahul, in the limited time I have, I will make one very important point. This we saw in Nadeep Kaur. We are seeing this now in the current Disha Ravi's case. There are letters that the police is getting saying that basic criminal procedure rules did not be followed thanks to the person who has been arrested himself. So for example, in Nadeep Kaur's case, when the question was asked, why was no medical examination done? Because our family has alleged that there was, you know, a, a torture in police custody. They said because we have a letter from her that says that she did not want a medical examination. Similar thing ap applies in Disha Ravi, you know, where is the right to legal counsel? So these basic protection in law... But, but you've said what you have, but you dodged my question about why Nikita ran away. Avni Bansal, you said what you did, but you didn't answer my question about why Nikita ran away. She was questioned for 13 hours. When the police came back the next day, if she'd done nothing wrong, why is she absconding? Well, see, there are two things, Rahul. First of all, in India, it's very easy for people to, uh, you know, for Gaurav, Mr. Gaurav Bhatia, with respect to sit and say, you know, the law will take its own course. But what we are seeing is not these isolated incidents. What we are seeing is that people like Shiv Kumar, whose birthday it is after two months, we did a story, we, we went and spoke to the family. Shiv Kumar's family has not been allowed to meet him for a month. Now the question is that it's all well for us to you know, sit on a TV debate and say why are people absconding and that may vary from case to case. I'm not saying there is no absconding happening in any case. But the question is can you put the entire due process of law Rahul. that has such foundations in this country and absolutely throw it outside the window? Okay.